church say amen? Amen. Will you stand with us all over the church if you will? Come on and give God the praise this morning. What a mighty God, God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore. What a mighty God we serve. What a loving God. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What an awesome God we serve. What an awesome God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a loving God. What a loving God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a peaceful God we serve. What a peaceful God, God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, we serve. We serve. We serve a mighty. We serve. We serve. We serve. We serve. We serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Oh, what a mighty God we Sir, come on, somebody ought to praise the mighty God. Come on, give God the praises if you will. God is a good God. Brought us all to another celebration. Amen. Come on, somebody ought to be glad about that this morning. That God is just a good God. Today is our Youth Sunday, and we're so glad to be in the presence, amen, of our young people. They're always here, but today they're going to lead us in worship. Am I right about it? Amen. And we certainly thank and praise God for our young people. Come on, praise God for our worship leader today as she comes. Excuse me. Thank you. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below.
morning. I'll be your worship leader on this morning and will now have the call to worship. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For they in thy courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wicked. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple, let all the earth keep silent before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O sing to the Lord a new song, for he is a marvelous thing. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth sing his praise. We will now have an opening hymn. King of my life. Let me say this to you, that one of the things that we always want to do, especially during our youth services, we want our young people to be familiar with hymns. Am I right? Isn't that one of our traditions? And so it is. Today is no exception that we sing one of the hymns of the church, King of my life. Want to encourage you to sing with us with uplifted voices and uplifted hearts. King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine shall the glory be. Lest I forget thy thorn crown brow, lead me to Calvary. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thine agony, oh, lest I forget thy love for me. Lead me to Calvary. Show me the tomb where thou was laid. Tenderly mourn and well. Angels in robes of light arrayed guarded thee while thy slept. Lest I forget the ceremony, lest I forget thine agony, oh, lest. I forget thy love for me. Lead me to Calvary. Let me like Mary, let me like Mary through the gloom come with a gift to thee. Show me the empty tomb lead me to Calvary lest I forget lest I forget Gethsemane lest I forget thine agony oh let I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. Last verse, may I be willing, Lord, to bear daily my cross for thee. Even thy cup 
of grief to share. Thou hast borne all for me. Lest I money, lest I forget thine agony, oh, lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Cal, but one more time, everybody singing with us, lest I forget Gethsemane. Lest I forget thine agony. Oh, lest I forget thy love for me. Lead me to Calvary. Come on and praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you. We will now have the invocation by Brother Jaden Hamilton. Following that, we'll have the scripture by Sister Ashayla Sumter. Good morning, church. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you to say thank you. Lord, thank you for bringing us in the house of the Lord one more time. Lord, we thank you for bringing each and every one of us in here today. Lord, we ask you to bless this, this speaker that comes this morning, Lord, and bless us with a good word. Lord, we, we thank you for this pastor that you've brought us, his family. Lord, we ask you to bless everyone who couldn't be here this morning, but you know they wanted to. And Lord, bless the ones who are here this morning so they can receive the word that's here, that comes from you. And Lord, just, just bless this world, Lord. Bless this church. Bless the church family. And Lord, just, just bless everyone. Bless the sick, Lord. Bless the hurt. Bless the down. You could pick them up, Lord. We just ask you that you you bless the people that are over us, the, po the politicians and all that. Lord, we just ask you that you keep everyone safe, Lord, as we leave from here. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning, church. I will be reading Mark chapter 11, verse 1 through 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Beth, Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to him, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a coat tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here shortly. They, found, they went and found a coat outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that coat? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the coat to Jesus and threw the clothes over it, he sat on it. Many people spread the clothes on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Osana, blesses here comes in the name of the Lord. Blesses the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Thank you. We will now have a selection by our choir.
Praise the Lord. How many of you know he reigned forever? He reigned forever. Praise the Lord. All hell. Come on, come on, come on. He reigned. Come on, why don't you stand? Come on, why don't you stand? Come on, choir. Somebody ought to just wave your hand. He reigns. by Sister Patricia Gain. He reigns forever. Hosanna, blessed in the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Good morning and welcome to St. Philip Monumental on this Palm Sunday. Pastor Clark will bring the message this afternoon at 3 p.m. at St. Peter AME Church in Newington as they celebrate appreciation services for our very own Reverend Jeremiah Jones. Trinity Fountain AME Church will host the Savannah Branch NAACP membership mass meeting this afternoon at 4 p.m. Reverend Ollie Robeson is the pastor. Volunteers are still needed to assist with various projects in preparation for an annual conference. See any officer. All boards and auxiliaries, please remain after service to take photos for our annual conference booklet. Brother C Christopher Coleman will serve as our photographer. So let's follow his instructions. Holy Week services each night at Taylor Chapel starts at 7 p.m. Camille Dash, who grew up in the Sunday school, was recently awarded a scholarship by the Francis Marion University African American Faculty and Staff Coalition. There were several scholarships awarded and Camille was chosen to give a speech on behalf of all the scholarship recipients. Monumental, you ha would have been proud. Several attendees, including the mayor of the city, gave glowing compliments and reviews of her speech. It pays to grow up in the church and Sunday school. Congratulations <laughs> to the dashes. As Brother Floyd comes, Pastor Clark, we truly appreciate your heart to our church and the vision you have for it. Thank you for leading our church into new areas of outreach and ministry. Thank you for dreaming big for our church and being willing to try new things. We are grateful for your faithful leadership, Brother Floyd. Let the church say amen. amen. Certainly, God has been good to all of us. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 17 states, The elders who direct the affairs of the church well are worthy of double honor, especially those who work in preaching and teaching. Sound like Reverend Clark to me. The bishop has declared that today will be pastor's appreciation. So we are asked to do whatever you possibly can in order to make this occasion very successful. Uh, after collection, if you will, we'll have special presentations from 
anyone who desires. But that's all right with you, Pastor. All right. <laughs> Thank you so very kindly. So this concludes my announcements. Please be as generous as you possibly can. Thank you in advance. Praise the Lord. Thank you so very much. Come on, give God the praises, if you will. We certainly thank and praise God for each and every one of you. We are looking forward to traveling to Newington, Georgia, downtown Newington, St. Peter's AME Church. Amen. Uh, that would be at 3 o'clock. We'll leave church here at around 2 o'clock. Uh, many of you know where that church is, but again, we want to go. We want to uh, certainly um, praise God, if you will, for uh, Reverend Jeremiah Jones. Come on, give God the praises, if you will. Let me remind you, as has already been stated, that of course we'll be having Holy Week each night this week. Come out and enjoy the Lord, if you will. We're having communion on Thursday night. Of course, the seven last sayings will be on Friday, but of course from Monday through Friday, we're going to be enjoying the Lord, uh, as not only as AMEs, but AMEs and Baptists and everyone else who will come. Amen? Amen? And of course, as we do that, we want to encourage all of you to make sure that we, are under, we do understand that this is Holy Week. And this is uh, Jesus making his way to the cross, if you will. So we want to make sure that we do that. Now, on this coming uh, Friday also at 12 o'clock over at Connors Temple Baptist Church, um, that we'll be having the seven last sayings also. I'm going to be doing one of the sayings at that time uh, with the Interdenominational Ministerial Alliance. For those of you who are uh, free, come over and, and share with us. A lot of things going on this week, uh, but make sure that you are a part of all of those things. Amen? Again, I thank and praise God for our uh, presiding elder. Thank God for him and his queenly wife, Reverend Dr. J. Hayko. Thank God for him and our supervisor. We thank God for him. He's done a wonderful job this year as presiding elder, and we're coming down now to uh, the 159th session of the Old Georgia Annual Conference. This is his first annual conference as a presiding elder. And uh, God knows what he's doing because his first church is hosting his first annual conference. And so we're looking forward to doing a wonderful job. We need every one of you. We need every one of you. We need everyone, especially our officers, we need you to come. And we need you to make sure that we welcome all of the district that's coming in, all of the um, uh, conference that's coming in. Make sure we welcome them with open arms and smiles on our faces and open arms and smiles on our faces and open arms and smiles on our faces and open arms and smiles on our faces. On our faces. Amen. Amen. We want them to be able to say that they certainly came into a house of God that know who God is. And so again, we thank and praise God for each and every one of you. Now, I see somebody waving at me. So she got to get <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, she's coming. We're going to make sure she has a microphone, please. This is Dr. Cora Thompson. I don't know what she wants, but she's coming. I was waving my hand just like I just don't care, but I do care. The thing is, Saturday, March the 30th, is annual YPD Day, and it's going to be here at St. Philip Monumental. Well, what does that mean? Our house. So that means I need all young people to be present parents, guardians, grandparents, friends, church members, pew members, whatever you may be, get the young people here. Let's not make Pastor Clark look bad and me not to look bad and the president not to look bad. I need you here in the house. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I couldn't have said that no better. Amen. Amen. Every now and then, every now and then, and again, we, we're, still, we're still celebrating Sister Robeson's birthday and everybody's birthday in March. Um, again, we thank God. Anybody born in March in here? Anybody just wave your hand, you was born in March. March, one of them years, one of them months people don't like to say they were born in. Y'all can just claim August if you want. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But, but, but every now and then, every now and then, and, and I love dedicating things to people, but, but every now and then I have to dedicate something to myself. Everything, every now and then you're going to have to dedicate something to yourself. Amen. And right now, Brother Jordan, I need to hear God. Right now, God is working it out. There's some things I just need him to work out this week. Come on, I'm just being real with myself. I don't care who's looking at me. I'm just being real with myself. 
I need him to work out some things for the annual conference. <laughs> Amen. And, and, and I'm prophesying today because I believe that he is working it out right now. Now, this ain't for everybody. Th this song is not for everybody. But for those of you who need God to work something out for you, and, and, and for those of us who believe he's already working it out for us, I need you to stand. Will you stand? Will you stand? Come on, you can just clap your, come on, come on. Right now, God is working it out. He's working it out. Right now, God is working it out. He's working it out. Right now, Somebody watching us, God is working it out. He's working it out. Right now, God is working it out. He's working it out. Right now, God is working it out he's working it out right now god is working it out he's working it out look at somebody next to you right now god is he's working it out you don't have to worry, working it out. Right now, God is working it out. He's working it out. Somebody is sick, but right now, God is working it out. He's working it out. Right now, God is working it out, working it out. Watch this. He's working it out. Yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. He's working it. 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 Out, out. Yes, he is. He's working it. Yes, he is. He's working it. Out, out, out. Oh, yes, he is. He's working it. Ow, ow, ow. Oh, yes, he. Right now, God is working it out. He's working it out. Right now, God is working it out. Come on and praise the Lord. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I don't care what you need. Yes, he is. You can shout right now. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Right now, God is working it out. We will now have the altar call by Sister Carolyn Jordan.
Dr. Jordan, sorry. Working it out. Amen. How many people worked it out on the cross? Everything you stand in need of has already been taken care of. And that's why this is such a special day as we celebrate that triumphal entry, as we understand and know the sacrifice that he made so that maybe we don't have to make it. The pain and suffering that he took that lets us know that he's worked it out already. And isn't it good news to know that anything you stand in need of was taken care of on the cross. It's nailed on the cross. Sin's been taken care of. Healing by his stripes, we're healed. It's already been taken care of. And all we need to do is just agree with that premise. How do we do it? We come boldly to the throne in prayer. Won't you come? Won't you thank him this morning? Won't you celebrate the fact that you're triumphant? Won't you agree with what we just sang and then go ahead home and walk it out to know that it's already worked out? This is just a confirmation time. Thank you, God. Anything you need. God's got it. When they get up off their knees, oh, there's room. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. He didn't forget about you. Mm. Matter of fact, he saw you afar off. And he will not pass you by. That's good news for somebody. You're not overlooked. Never leave you. Never forsake you. Even though you walk through the valley time, Oh, he'll hear your fainted cry. He'll hear you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Oh, he's a way maker. He'll make a way out of no way. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Yeah. 
suffer the little children and for it that not. If you can't come to him like a child, there ain't no room for you. And so for the petitions of his children at this altar, we say thank you. For the gift of their faith, we praise your holy name. For the movement of the Holy Ghost on their circumstances, we say hallelujah. For, uh, the fact that they are now at a young age, steadfast and unmovable. Oh God, we seek your keeping power, God. Because if you keep them, they will not be sifted. God, we lift their families and their teachers and their pastor to you right now. We lift their extended family and their siblings to you right now, God. And we just believe because of their faithfulness, some things are going to happen in the family line. Because they came boldly to the throne of grace. Some generational burdens are being lifted even now as we speak. And for their sacrifice, because they press their way, for their sacrifice, God, we give you praise on today. God, seal every prayer that was uttered at your altar on today. Every prayer that was lifted from the pew, we touch and agree praying in faith, believing that anything we asked for in the name of Jesus, it shall be done. And we agree by saying amen, amen, and amen. While on the earth thou art called, Lord, I know you're calling. Do not pass me by, oh, do not pass me by. Come on, somebody just sing the chorus with us just one more time. I'm calling you, Savior, Savior, oh, Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry, hear my, hear my, hear my humble, my humble cry. Oh, while on others, Lord, I know you're calling. While on others, while on others, thou art calling. Lord, I know you're calling. Do not pass me by. Not pass me by. Don't pass me by. Don't pass me by. Don't pass me by. Oh, do not pass me. Don't pass me by. Don't pass me by. Don't pass me by. Oh, do not pass me by. Come on and give God the praises if you will. He's worthy. Worthy of all our praises. Come on, praise the Lord, somebody. Praise God for our worship leader. We will now have a selection by a choir following the word of God by Reverend Dr. Bernard Clark. In that order.
come to lift our hands and give him glory. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. Everybody sing. Come on, come on. Well, glory. to lift our hands and send up Judah. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. Everybody sing. Come on, come on. We come to lift our hands. Give him glory, give him glory. We come hands and give him praise. Give him glory. lift our hands and magnify him. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. Everybody sing. Come on, come on. We come to lift our hands. Give him glory. Give him glory. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. Sopranos, Halle. Halle. Join them, Altos. Halle. Bring it in, tennis, Halle. Oh, take it up, Holly. Give God the praises, if you will. Everybody, you hear me say, everybody ought to be the pastor for one day. Um, when y'all saw me laughing and looking back, I was asking Sister Fern, is that it? <laughs> Amen. I, I didn't know whether they were going to sing another song for us, but they've done a wonderful job this morning. Come on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank God for our musicians. Come on. Praise God for Brother Mark. On the keyboard, praise God for Brother Reynard on the organ. Praise God for Brother Jordan on the bass guitar. Praise God uh, for Brother Guy Hard on the drums. Praise God for Brother Shetty on the horn. Praise God for Sister Fern, the director. Stand up, Fern. Stand up. Praise God. Praise God for Sister Taylor, the, <laughs> the assistant director. You just make some parts up. Again, we certainly thank and praise God for each and every one of you. So glad to see my, my sister. Let me ask all of those who are visiting with us today, would you stand, all of our guests, would you stand wherever you are? So glad, so glad that you thought enough of us to come out and to fellowship with us on today. We're just glad to have you. Amen. 
And we hope and pray that something have been, has already been done or said, but if not, will be done or said to encourage you along the way because we all need to be encouraged. So again, we welcome you here to St. Philip Monumental AME Church here in the beautiful city of Savannah, Georgia. On my left side, anyone who would have anything to say to my brothers and sisters? Lord, thank you for the witness, Brother Dad. All right, thank God for you. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. We thank God for you. We're so glad. And you're home. You, you're home, by the way, but we thank God for you. You're home. We thank and praise God for you. Yes, my brother. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank God for you. Thank God. Yes. Yeah. Disconnect. Praise the Lord. All right. Yes. Praise the Lord. White family. Praise the Lord. Go ahead now. Connected. Thank God for the device. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank God for you. <laughs> Dr. 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 Uh, Jordan and Dr. Dixon, would you stand? Do you, you, you're right at home. They're from the first Disconnect. also. Amen. You know. <laughs> praise the Lord. So we're glad to have you. Again, we Connected. certainly thank and praise God for you. Now, at this time, Sister Amber, Sister Amber, at this time, my sister, would you stand and my niece, would you stand? Now, normally, normally when the pastor has someone who's visiting out his family, he he introduced them early on, so you know who you're sitting by, so you won't say nothing. <laughs> so, so this is my oldest, one of my oldest sisters, Amy Eason, and my, my niece, Sister Benitra Eason, and we, I thank and praise God for them. Amen. Um, if, if I am here in the pulpit, uh, Sister Amy is one of those reasons why, because she used to beat me. Lord, have mercy, she used to beat me. <laughs> Amen. So I thank and praise God for her. God bless you both and keep you is our prayer. <laughs> what, what she said? She'll never live that down. No, no, no. She was a school teacher. She was a school teacher, uh, Dr. Thompson. And look at here. Yeah, yeah. We were ready for school way before we went because she tore us up. Amen. God bless you. Deborah, that's right. She beat us, Lord. She, she beat us. <laughs> she, <laughs> she didn't play the radio. Now I'm saying, I'm 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 saying this. You know, sometimes you gotta get your foot out your mouth. Amen. But but I'm saying it because somebody you concerned about touching your children. I can't tell you to beat them. I can't tell you what to do. Amen. But I can tell you to let them know who's who. You can let them know who's who. They'll, it'll grow up in them. You never know what can happen to them. Sometimes they can even become a pastor. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. Father, I stretch my hand to thee, no other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, or whether shall I go? Sing this with us. Father, I stretch, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know, no other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, or whether shall I go? If thou withdraw thyself from me, thyself from me or whether Brother Shetty, can you say it on the horn for us? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on. Oh, may I now receive that gift, my soul without a dime. Oh, may I now receive that gift, receive that gift, my soul without a dime, my soul. and praise the Lord somebody praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord this is Palm Sunday today is Palm Sunday and those of us who are believers those of us who are of the Christian faith ought to be glad about today <laughs> praise the Lord and everyone should have received some palms a palm yes that's yours some people love to plait it amen and do other things with it and so uh, of course, those of us who cherish, if you will, uh, not only our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but his journey. Amen. We understand that today is Palm Sunday. In the gospel as recorded by Mark, Mark's gospel, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11, were read for 
our spiritual edification on today. Amen? Amen. And so I would like to, from that passage of scripture, Mark 11, 1 through 11, I would like to leave this subject with you. The subject simply says, on the way to the cross. Say that with me. On the way to the cross. Say it again. On the way to the cross. One more time. On the way to the cross. There are many reasons why you and I should be glad that we are of the Christian faith. One of my jobs today is to encourage those who have not given their life to Christ to do just that. There are many reasons that people don't believe in Jesus Christ. There are many reasons why people won't give their life to Christ. I want you to know that one of the reasons is because of their ignorance of who Jesus really is. That there are some of us who still can't connect who Jesus really is. We live in a microwave society, and if you tell us something and we don't get it within the, the first minute, we tend to discard it. And I want you to know that so many of us have thrown the baby out with the bathwater, that there are some things that God sent our way for us to believe and to understand that we chose not to believe it. I submit to you, my brothers and sisters, that if more people believed in Jesus, that the world would be a better place. If more people believed in Jesus, you wouldn't have politicians lying for the sake of lying, knowing that they are wrong. Amen? But influencing people not only in their districts and not only in their country, but all over the world, influencing people to know that it's all right to lie. I, I want to let you know that, that, that Jesus came and said, I am the light of the world. And when there is light, there is no darkness. There are some of you who have joined in with us on watch night service. And, and we begin watch night service with everybody having a candle and standing all around the walls here, amen, in this temple. And it, it boils down to, 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 to just one person, whoever preached that night, to just having one candle right here. And I remind you, everybody, that, 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 that you don't have to blow your candle out, blow other people's candle out to let yours shine. That we live in a society where people want to blow other people's candle out just so theirs can shine. Amen, somebody. If your candle is a true candle, your candle will shine. Some of us, we wait until we get to church for our candle to shine, but your candle ought to shine on the job. Your candle ought to shine in your house. Wherever you go, somebody ought to see a shining light. Amen, somebody. And so it is that you don't have to blow somebody else's candle out. We live in a society where people want to blow other people's candle out so that theirs can shine only to find out that somebody, while you're trying to blow somebody else's candle out, somebody trying to blow yours out too. Am I right about it? And it comes from us not believing in Jesus and who he is. But in order for us to believe in Jesus and who he is, we ought to be able to study some things and know some things about Jesus. That when we look at this week and we look at next week, no matter who you are, whether you're Baptist, Methodist, amen, Pentecostal, Church of God in Christ, every sermon that we preach, some of us were taught in, in seminary that every sermon ought to take you to the cross. That every sermon ought to be about Jesus. I don't care who you're preaching about. You could be preaching about Black History Month. You could be preaching about Women History Month. But every sermon ought to take you to Jesus. That the sermon ought not be about Clark. Clark don't have no heaven to put you in. That the sermon ought not be about Clark. Amen? You're going to get into some things that Clark can't even help you out of. But if you will lean and depend on Jesus, everything is going to be all right. I didn't say that every day would be Sunday, but God will show up and he will show out. God will. He'll take care of you. We, we, don't, we, don't, we need to know more about Jesus. We love to sing the songs. The songs, some of them have some good beats. We love to sing them, but all we know is the beat. <laughs> Amen. But every now and then we have to listen to the words of the song. We have to listen to the words of down at the cross. 
Where my Savior died, down where from cleansing from sin I cried. Praise the Lord, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory! Come on, I'm not preaching to everybody. I'm not speaking to everybody. I'm preaching to the ones who've been through something since last Easter. I'm preaching to the ones who've been through something since last Palm Sunday. That you know it wasn't your money that brought you here. You know it wasn't your prestige that brought you here. But it must have been God. It must have been his son Jesus Christ. It must have been him smiling. Smiling. Smiling on you. And, 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 and so it is that we ought to want to know more about Jesus. Listen, if you're a Christian, and I pray that you are, if you're a Christian, that, that this is the week we celebrate. Listen, if you were frowning all the other 51 weeks, this is your week to smile. Amen, somebody. You ought not look like you've been chewing on onions this week. You ought to be glad because you serve a savior, you have a savior, and you know who he is. Yes, the world still question, how do you know he lives? I know he lives because he lives. I know he lives because somebody has to separate the sun from the moon. I know he lives. I know, I know, I know he lives. Jesus, Jesus now is on his way on his way to the cross. This is the last week, if you will, of his natural life. How, how many of you know, and, and look, if you really know something about Jesus, if you really understand Jesus, you gotta know that the closer you get to what God has for you, the harder some things get. People who never talked about you begin to talk about you when God is getting ready to do something for you. Amen, somebody. People who never scandalize your name will scandalize your name when God is getting ready to do something for you. Listen, church, listen, monumental, we ought to know it by now that we don't worry about when people talk about us because when people talk about us, something is about to happen. When people talk about us, it could be an elevator. When people talk about us, it could be a roof on the church. When, when people talk, there are some things that are just bound to happen. I come to tell somebody, don't worry about people talking about you. Don't worry about people digging ditches for you. People dig ditches. People dig ditches. People dig ditches. But praise God, the church of old said, you, when you dig one ditch, you better dig. Because the trap you set. If, if you didn't clap your hands, you must be digging ditches. Amen. Because God has it all in control and God will take care of you. What is it? What is it? Why? Why? Why am I a Christian? I'm a Christian because Jesus, he, he never was in too big a hurry to help somebody. You, you, you know anybody in too big a hurry? to help somebody. Something happened to me some years ago. I never told my sisters, Jim, but something happened to me some years ago. And you ever know anybody who too busy getting to church? Now, you need to be here. You ought not be dew dropping in. Come on, I'm... You're not going to get this at Walmart. But I can remember being a young man, and I was directing the choir then, and going on my way to, to St. James, and, and one of the members almost hit my car. One of the older members almost hit my, didn't know I was gonna be a preacher. I didn't. But I've had to put that in a few sermons, that sometimes people are too busy going to, this way until they almost kill somebody. But Jesus was never in such a hurry that he couldn't help somebody along the way. Come on, that's for you. That's for you. 
That, that, that's for you. That, that, that's for you because, because even when we look at Elijah and when he and Ahab were fighting on the mountain, Mount Carmel, amen, when they were fighting up there, we, we, it, we, we find that, that, that Ahab, was, he, he called on his God and, and, and Elijah, amen, said when his God didn't show up, when Baal didn't show up, Elijah said, your God must be on vacation. Your, your, your God must be busy helping somebody else. That he's so busy, he can't even come and see about you. But how many of you know, you know that we serve of a God that is omnipresent, that he can help everybody in this church at the same time. He can help you, amen, somebody, whether you're from Savannah, Georgia, or Okinawa, Japan, he can help you at the same time. We serve a God that can do anything but fail. Jesus was never too busy to help somebody. He was never too busy to teach. How many of us, we love to talk about how bad the children are. When was the last time you taught one? And I'm not talking about next door, I'm talking about in your house. When was the last time you sat them down to tell them something, to tell them, listen, I'm not talking about all of the things that they're going to learn in school anyway. When was the last time you sat down to tell them about Jesus? This is a wonderful time for you to spend some time with your children telling them about Jesus. Jesus is on his way, on his way to the cross. Mark gives us great narrative, Mark being the first book that was actually written of the New Testament. We know, amen, that Mark is not the first one in the New Testament, but it is the first one that was written. Theologians say Matthew was the second one, borrowed a little bit from Mark, making his a little longer. Am I right? Luke and John came respectively. But here we find Mark talking about Jesus' triumphal entry, that Jesus coming to Jerusalem Amen. As king. He, he says that they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage in, in, in verse number one, and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, that Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a coat tied there. How many know Jesus is still sending men and women? He's still sending us. He's still sending us because the work is still to be done. Yeah. That Jesus is still sending us to tell dying men and sinking women that he is still the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. But he says if you go there, you're going to find a coat tied there. Now you really uh, must understand, he says, that which no one has ever ridden. So, so this means that this coat hadn't been broken. Some say he may have been a small horse. Others say he was a donkey. But either way, he was not, he'd never been ridden. He hadn't been broken. But he said, untie it and bring it here. Anyone who asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. How many of you know that God is still using who he want to use? Where he want to use them? When he want to use them? Come on, can I preach for just a minute? There are some of us trying to hold on to friends that God told us to let go. Their season is gone. They help you to get to where you are now. That's not mean you turn your back on them. Amen. That means that the season is gone. That when we find Jesus, he said, go in and I want you to get this coat. You're going to find a coat tied there. Look at Jesus showing off. Amen. Because even in this day, nobody rode a coat that was not broken. But yet and still, he said, go and get that coat. Amen. He says, untie it and bring it here. If anybody asks you, why are you doing this? Say that the Lord has need of it and will send it back shortly. The Bible says they went and found the coat outside in the street, tied at the doorway. And as they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing? Praise the Lord. Why are you untying that coat? Can I get a witness? They answered as Jesus had told them to answer. And, and the people let them go. But when they brought the coat to Jesus, can I get a witness today? The Bible says that they threw their coats over it. And, they, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road. While others spread branches there that they had cut in the fields. But those who went ahead, amen, and those who followed Jesus, they shouted something. Can I get a witness? 
when we understand the scripture, we understand that Jesus didn't have to ride in on a colt. He could have rode on anything he wanted to ride on. Some of my young people, just for you to know today, uh, that when we look at Jesus riding in on a colt, uh, you might want to compare that, if you will, to a smart car today. A smart car, I don't know if you have one, please forgive me for preaching about it, but a smart car is nothing more than a go-kart with airbags. It's a little small car. And every now and then you'll see somebody on TikTok who two or three went by and picked it up and turned it over. <laughs> Amen, somebody. But the fact of the matter is that Jesus didn't have to ride in on the smart car. He could have rode in a Bentley. He could have rode in a Maserati. He could have rode in whatever he wanted to ride in. But he chose to ride in something that was humble. Can I get a witness? And look at Jesus. Riding into Jerusalem, uh, theologians say the last people uh, who rode into Jerusalem, uh, they were warriors, uh, and they'd already killed about 5,000 people, uh, and they were going to be welcomed, uh, amen, by the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Uh, but look at Jesus, uh, hadn't done no wrong, uh, hadn't hurt nobody, uh, hadn't killed nobody, uh, but he still has uh, a triumphal entry. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, can I get somebody uh, to agree with me today uh, that I invite him uh, everywhere I go? Uh, yes. Uh, can I get a witness, Brother Dash, uh, that I want somebody to take the credit for it, uh, that the reason your job is still a job uh, is because every time you go there, uh, you invite Jesus to come with you. Uh, and when Jesus come with you, uh, he'll bless everybody. Uh, he'll bless the Christians. Uh, he'll bless the agnostics. Uh, he'll bless the atheists. Uh, he'll bless the non-believer. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, I believe today that when we welcome Jesus, that when we praise the Lord, amen, everything is going to be all right. Jesus, he's on his way. He's on his way to his death. But can I get a witness that every time we mention the name of Jesus, we ought to praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can I submit to you today uh, that there used to be a time uh, when I was a new Christian. Uh, I was a little skeptical uh, about who was watching me. Uh, I was a little skeptical uh, about who would talk about me. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, I was a little skeptical uh, about my friends leaving me alone uh, because sometimes uh, you can act too holy. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, but when we live in the world today, uh, what is too holy? Uh, what is calling on Jesus' name? I don't care now. I've been through too much to worry about who's going to talk about me. I've been through too much to worry about who won't give me a ride in their car. I've been through too much to worry about who's going to do me wrong. But God, God, through all I've been through, one thing, remain faithful. God, remain faithful. I've been through enough to see people walk away from me. I've been through enough to see people not want to be around me. But when I look back, every time I see God, can I get a witness? Even when he shouldn't have been there, he was right there with me. Praise the Lord. So the Bible said that the people began to shout out, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the highest. I come to tell somebody that Jesus is on his way to the cross. Can I get a witness? Can I preach for just a few more minutes that there is somebody, you're going through something today, but I dare you to shout out, Hosanna. There is somebody, you got health concerns, but I dare you to shout out, Hosanna. Somebody, you're in trouble now. 
but I dare you uh, to shout out, uh, Hosanna, uh, somebody. Uh, you don't know uh, how you're going to pay your bills, uh, but I dare you uh, to shout out, uh, Hosanna, uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, praise God. Uh, praise God. Uh, the Bible said, uh, that they put him on the coat. Some laid palms all along the street. Others laid their coats all along the street because this was the king. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now everybody didn't believe and everybody don't believe today. But for those of us who believe that Jesus, he is. Jesus, he is. The great I am. Jesus, he is a friend when you're friendless. Jesus, he is a bridge over troubled water. Jesus, he is water when I'm thirsty. He's bread when I'm hungry. Yes, yes, he's on the way to the cross. He's on the way to the cross. Can I get a witness? He's going to go through some things. This week, uh, he's going to find himself uh, with a fig tree uh, that got leaves on it, uh, but don't have no fruit. Uh, am I right about it? Uh, he's going to find himself uh, walking, uh, if you will, through the valley uh, and the shadows of death, uh, but he's going to make his way. Uh, he's going to make his way. Uh, he's going to make his way uh, to the cross. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, yeah! Yeah! Uh, He's going to make his way between two thieves. He's going to make his way to the cross. They're going to hang him high. They're going to stretch him wide. They're going to pierce him in the side. Yeah! Yeah! The blood will flow down the street. Yeah! But praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. On his way to the cross. Uh, he's still, he's still a king. Amen. Now he's going to make his way to the cross. You got to find out the next part of the narrative next week. That's the cliffhanger. Amen. Commercial come in now. He make his way to the cross. Praise the Lord. Emblem, suffering, shame. He's going to make his way there. Turn the cross into something that man shall never forget. Amen. On the way to the cross, stand with me all over the church. We're all on our way somewhere. Where are you going? Where, where are you going? Thank God we're on our way somewhere. Where are you going? I hope you know where you're trying to get to. Come on, I'm talking to everybody. Our young people, you gotta have a plan. Where are you going? If you don't have a plan, you end up anywhere. Jesus knew he had to die. But now you can be happy because, because he died, you don't. That don't have to be one of your plans now. You need insurance. Amen. But I want you to know you also need assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Over the foretaste. Glory divine. Let Jesus be your assurance today. Follow him. Take no chance getting lost. Follow Jesus. You're going to have to cross some deserts. Job said, man born of a woman of a few days, full of trouble. Can anybody say Job was right? But in the midst of that, follow Jesus. Follow him this week. Go to Mark 11 chapter. By the time you get to chapter 16, 
you would have made it through Holy Week. Amen. Because it, it has your name on every page. Because in, in this week that Jesus is going to spend, he's going to have some trials and some tribulations. But he's still going to get to the cross. You're going to have some trials, some tribulations. Some things you're going to understand, other things you won't. There's some things you won't understand until you get to the other side of the Jordan. But you ought to thank God for a God who said, I'll be there with you every step of the way. How do I know we ought to thank God? Because it is during this week that, that Jesus will thank God. Get all the way to the cross. Say, Father, remove this bitter cup. Something happens. Come to himself. He said, but not my will, but thine will be done. I'm, I'm closing, but, but can I get you to just say, not my will, but thine will be done? And know that God will, God's will, it is for you to have life, and to have it more abundantly on the way to the cross. Put me in G, Brother Mark. I'm on my way to Canaan land. Sing that with me. I'm on my way to Canaan land. Canaan land. I'm on my way to Canaan land. I'm on my way, praise the Lord, I'm on my way, I'm on my way to Canaan land, I'm on my way to Canaan land, I'm on my way to Canaan land. I'm on my way, praise the Lord, I'm on my way. There ain't nothing you can do to hinder me. There ain't nothing you can do to hinder me. There ain't nothing you can do to hinder me. I'm on my way, praise the Lord, I'm on my, the doors of the church are open. Perhaps there is someone today who does not know Jesus and the pardon of their sins. This is your turn, this is your chance. What a wonderful day for you to give me your hand and to give God your heart. If that person is you, don't worry about who's looking at you, but would you make that step today? Is there one on my way? Is there one today to Canaan land? I'm on my way, praise, I'm on my way. Our second call today is for that individual. You already know who God is, but you don't have a church home. If you do not have a church home and this is where God has sent you, would you come? Is there one today on my way to Canaan land? I'm on my way. Is there one today to Canaan land? I'm on my way, praise the Lord, I'm on my way, I'm on my way, where Jesus is, I'm on my way, where Jesus is, I'm on my way, where Jesus is. I'm on my way, praise the Lord, I'm on my way. One more time, one more time. I'm on my way, Canaan land. I'm on my way, to
to Canaan land. I'm on my way to Canaan land. I'm on my way. Praise the Lord. I'm on my way. Come on and give God the praises if you will. Praise the Lord. This is our moment of stewardship, tithes, and offering. We want to thank you. I would like to thank each and every one of you for giving as you have given. Some of you give every, some, some, every Sunday, amen, every week. Others give every month, amen. But no matter when you give, again, I thank and praise God for your gift. As a matter of fact, I praise God for the means by which you're able to give on today. So we thank you for your tithes and your offering. We thank you, again, for being obedient to the word of God and having a covenant with him. And so as we prepare our offerings, know that we do have various ministries in the church that you can give to. You can give to our missionary ministry, our steward ministry, our trustee ministry, our Sunday school. We thank you in advance. Amen. All right, we also have a green bucket today. We're going to have our, one of our young people standing as we give to our young people department. You can also go to Givelify. You can give by going to Givelify at St. Philip Monumental. Also, you can give by coming by the church or mailing your offering to the church. Again, we thank you in advance. Will you stand with me all over the church? All over the church, please. Will you stand? Ushers will direct you from the rear. Every. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah. To our God. Glory hallelujah. To our God. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. God our Savior. God our Savior. God our Healer. He's our Deliverer. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. God our Savior. God, our healer. He's our deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God, it's to our God. Praise the Lord. All right, at this time, we turn it over to the hands of Brother Floyd. Thank you, Pastor. At this time, we will now pause for special presentations. Please come. Let the church say amen. amen. I would let my brother do this because he got a better voice than me, but mama is, is uh, up there in the ceiling looking down and she's smiling. Right. Pastor Clark, you know we love you so much. And mother loves you even more than that. Yeah. And so on behalf of the Perkins, Sellers, Eason, and all the other families that make up our family. We'd like to make a special presentation to you today. Thank you so very much. Praise the Lord. Amen. 
Just let me add a caveat to that right now. Uh, I would be remiss if, if I did not say something special about the special man of God. Amen. How can they heal without a preacher? And God has planted this man in this vineyard for such a time as this. Amen, somebody. And though I'm retired, I'm sitting right here on there. Amen, and happy to do so. God be with you. God continue to bless your ministry. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Church, say amen. amen. I just want to thank you, Pastor, for your radical hospitality. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Just want to thank God for the gift that Pastor Clark is to the kingdom and the gift he is to us here. Words really can't express. We see what you do here in the building, but your reach is far beyond. And when you toil late in the midnight hour and when you show acts of kindness to people and when your patience... <laughs> your patience. I'll just leave it there. Thank you. Dr. Thompson, wake up. The missionary is going to go before the YPD. Uh, to Pastor Clark, from the Annie Roberts Judah Missionary Society, we want to say thank you so much for your support, your love, and your generosity to our church and to our society. You support us wholeheartedly across the church, and we love you and we thank you. Pastor, everything they said, ditto, okay? But y'all do know that no one's perfect, and that the pastor do have one fault. It is a known one, so I'm going to bring it out. Yes, he went to Beach High School. <laughs> but God is good because he went to the Savannah State University. So that makes up for that, all right? But you know the young people has to come in our own way. So here's Lisa. Dear Pastor, thank you, Pastor, for all you do, for your work, your kindness, and your guidance, too. You point to Jesus, you walk the walk, and we usually listen when you talk. We think you're special, we think you're great, and we will pray for you every day. No, really, Pastor, we got your back. Now we will cut you just a little slack. We truly think you're the best, and we thank you for all you invest. God bless you, Pastor. Thank you for being the best pastor. Thank you for all that you do for us. All right. Thank you so much. Now, we know pastor like kind words. We also know pastor likes gift. But there's nothing, nothing like a little bit of what? M-O-N-E-Y. Here you go. <laughs> From the YPDers. <laughs> One, Dr. Thompson. Ain't but one. Anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Clark, on behalf of my church, Mount Zion down in Garda, first we want to thank you for your love and your support and always coming when called. Thank you so very much on behalf of me and my family. Can't thank you enough for all that you've done for us. Thank you for the phone calls, the encouragement, the, the, the information that you've been willing to share, and for calling back whenever we call you if we don't get you. So we just want to say we love you, we, we appreciate everything you do, and you will find our, our, our love for you sent through uh, Giftify. Thank you very much. God bless you, Reverend Kevin. God bless you. God bless you. Pastor Glock, I just want to thank you for believing in me that when no one else did. 
and I thank you every day for the training because you stay on me. I thank you, thank you, thank you. He stays on me, but training is so important. And I'm going to continue to follow his leadership and his training. I already put my money in there. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Reverend Jeremiah Jones, <laughs> St. Peter, hear me. Pastor Clark, on behalf of the Sunday School, to the hardest working preacher in the 6th Episcopal District, I don't know when you sleep, I don't know when you get rest, but we're praying mightily that you return for Philippi. <laughs> God bless you, Brother Dash, our Sunday School Assistant Superintendent. Pastor, he's my friend. Um, from the Stewardess Board, I want to clip a Stewardess Board. We just got two representatives here today. A lot of the people are still in for the pandemic. But we thank you, Pastor, for all that you do. And I did over Cora and all those people on that side that went before <laughs> us, and all the people that's behind me going to say, and all the people that might be thinking out there, what are they going to say? It's all good. Thank you, Praise Pastor. Praise the Lord. Sister Molly, thank you. Let me shake your hand. God bless you. I don't know if I can follow uh, <laughs> Diane. But Pastor Clark from the Annie B. Williams Stewardess Board. Stand up, stewardesses, if you're here. Praise the Lord. You know, this morning we studied uh, Stephen. Yes. And the faith that Stephen had. We were, we thought about you mm. when we were studying the lesson this morning. You have remained faithful throughout all the opposition. And look what we have accomplished. Praise the Lord. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so very much, Sister Gaines. My Bryan County crew. <laughs> Trustees, please stand. Pastor Clark, I don't have a fancy speech, <laughs> but I would say it's proof in the pudding. All right. Uh, J.C. Lewis had a slogan back in the day that says, who else can do this? No one in this town. Look at the roof. Somebody say roof. roof. <laughs> Look at the elevator. Somebody say the elevator. elevator. Look at the pastor. Somebody say Pastor Clark. Pastor Clark. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is from the trustees and from the Kemp family. God bless you. Thank you so very much. Brother Derek, let me shake your hand at least. Yes, sir. And Sister Cora still beats. Sister Cora still beats. <laughs> Listen, I told everybody when y'all gave me an opportunity to have the microphone before that the pastor really reminds me of my father, who I think the most of. And my father, Reverend Snowden, taught me that love is an action word. All right. You can say anything you want to out of your mouth, but he said, if I want to know if you love me, I just watch what you do. All right. We're doing it, Pastor, from the Snowden, Scott, and Hodge family. Praise God bless Lord. you. God bless you, Sister Mary Snowden, one and only. Sister. Let the church say amen. Amen. You know, good leaders follow good leaders. <laughs> and when Brother Floyd <laughs> said that today was going to be Dr. Clark's appreciation, I said, I better follow leadership. So on behalf of the district consultant, Sister Brenda Young Hathco, she always asks me every Sunday, where are we going today? And I said, we're going to celebrate Dr. Bernard Clark, my first pastor. And we thank you for, for you. We thank, that's from the district consultant and I. We thank you for your wife and family. And we thank God for the St. Philip Monumental African Methodist Episcopal Church. God bless you. We do have an annual conference coming up. So as we always say, we'll say, all hands on deck, and God bless you, sir. God bless you, Presiding Elder Reverend Dr. J. Hayko. Let me shake your hand, sir. God bless you. I'm not going to cry, but, Pastor, you have been everything to me and my siblings. God knows my mother loves you. And we include her right now today in everything we do. That's how we were able to get by that. So on behalf of my mother and my five, my four siblings, you have just a little something down in your office. I should have brought it upstairs, but Thank you'll you. see what it is. We love you, Pastor. Praise the Lord, Sister Looper. I did see it. Amen. I, I did receive it. Thank you. Amen. Anyone else? Brother Mason. Good afternoon, Jerry. Good afternoon. Pastor, 
I'm so glad that you are my pastor because you showed me you are a friend when I need you and you the pastor when I need you. And I appreciate it and I love you and I'm glad to be a member of St. Philip. Praise the Lord. Thank you so very much, Brother Mason. He's out of Scriven County. He lived in Savannah. You, He's from Oliver, Georgia, that area. All right. Anyone else? On behalf of your extended family, the Clark family, the Easton family, and all of us, we are just so proud of you and mostly proud of your accomplishments and of your family and how they support you, and we try to support you as well. And as always, uh, in your heart forever, you're a beach bulldog, and nobody can do <laughs> anything about that. Thank you, Exalta. Anybody else? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Anyone else? O on behalf of uh, Brother Eddie McCarthy and the sons of Allen, they presented you, we presented you a gift, a token of love. On behalf of the steward board, ditto. On behalf of the Floyd family, we wish you well. We are most appreciative of everything you've done I can't articulate everything you've done for Monumental, but you're still working. We appreciate you and everything you do, your entire household, your family, the ministerial staff, that we just love you. Amen. And that's all of that. Amen. Thank you so very kindly. Okay, I want to make sure you don't take your gift home. <laughs> I have one right here. <laughs> I'm going to take it back. No, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding on to it as long as I can. <laughs> so, so, but I wanted to say to uh, Pastor Clark, coming from Florida and, and coming up here and meeting all of you, I am so glad and so grateful to be here at St. Philip Monumental AME Church uh, through uh, Ms. Pat and everything. She said, you got to go to church with me. And so I said, well, Ms. Pat, I'm trying. I found it, but I kept passing by and everything, and I said, oh, I can't park, I gotta go back home. So I would go back home, but I came at the right time, and I thank God for you, and I've adopted the Clark family, and Sister Antoinette, she has my maiden name, and um, I just wanted to say, cousin, I'm happy for you. <laughs> so I adopted the family. So to Pastor Clark, this is for you, now you can have it. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want no change. No, not yet. No, no. Not, <laughs> I, 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 and to Sister Antoinette, uh, my girl over here, I give her this and everything. And God bless you. God bless the family. And I love all of you. And Praise God bless the Lord. all of you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on Thank up. you so very Thank kindly. Come on Thank you so very kindly. Look like Sister Clark has been summoned up here. This is the Toya. Come. The whole Clark family. Toya, come with. Where's Amber? Amber working Amber, somewhere. The Toya. Amber working somewhere. Yeah. All right. That'll work. Jordan, right. if you could hear me, come on. I know you too. Yeah, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you at Gaines Chapel. <laughs> so. Our most beloved, most efficient pastor of St. Philip Monumental. You know, on behalf of all the parishioners, the very fine parishioners of Monumental, it is with great joy that we present this token of love to you. It's our hope that we'll be able to present something every year by <laughs> Doing it that way, that means that the bishop can't move you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so our attitude is genuine gratitude. Thank you so very, very kindly for being our pastor. Thank you so <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so very much. Thank you to each and every one. Thank you, Brother Floyd, Brother Derek. Thank you to each and every one of our leaders. Thank you to the entire congregation. Um, thank you to all our visitors and everyone else. I want to thank I asked them to come up because Dr. Thompson started something. Dr. Thompson, you might want to know we are a house divided. 
um, because I've been praying for Sister Antoinette because she graduated from Groves. <laughs> We've been pay, praying for her a long time. But, um, but, but the, the greatest prayer is for Toya. She graduated from Savannah High. And so, <laughs> but something, but something uh, magical happened. Jordan happened to want to go to Grove, so he, um, to, to, to Beach, excuse me. He graduated from Beach because they had a good band. And, and y'all pray for Amber. Amber went to Grove with like her mama, so y'all pray for her. <laughs> but again, I thank and praise God for you, you, and especially you. The day has been well spent. I want to thank you. I've been always taught that when someone do something for you, it's always good to say thank you because thank you makes room for more. And so I want to thank you so very much from the depths of my heart. So thank you. Well, good afternoon, church. As Pastor said, with open hearts, uh, open arms, and smile on our faces, we say thank you. We thank you for the love and the appreciation that you showed today, but not only today. You always um, show your love and kindness to us, and we love you all, and we thank you for what you do. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much to my monumental family. We love y'all. Thank y'all so much. When, when they start passing that mic, they're going to tell me it was time to go anyway. You shouldn't have gave it to us. Everyone standing, please, again, I thank and praise God for you. Presiding Elder uh, Hateco, again, we thank God for you and your queenly wife. We're always glad to be in your company. Amen. And we will meet directly afterwards. Reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place if you can. Reach out and touch. Reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place if you can. Reach out and touch. Reach out and touch somebody's hand. Somebody's hand. Make this world a better place, this world a better place. If you let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day of celebration. We thank you for everything you've done. We thank you for every song that was sung. We thank you for every prayer that was prayed, for every scripture that was read. We thank you for the word of God reminding us that you're on your way to the cross this week. Go with us, God, and guide us and protect us. We thank you right now for the witness of all your people, but we thank you for the witness of Jesus Christ. Now may the grace of God, the love of Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth now and forevermore. Let every heart say amen, 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 and amen. Remember, officers, we are taking pictures.